What's going on everybody and welcome to part 37 of our machine learning tutorial series. Leading up to this, we've been talking about a whole bunch of machine learning classifiers, but specifically clustering, even more specifically flat clustering, even more specifically k-means clustering. So with flat clustering and k-means, the idea is that you, the scientist, get to tell the machine, hey, I want you to separate this data set into k number of groups or x groups, but in our case with k-means, k number of groups. So we've used k-means, uh, but this time we're actually going to build a, our own custom version of k-means. And to recap what k-means is, if you visualize, let's say we've got two-dimensional data. So envision a two-dimensional graph with some, some data points on it. We pick any two data points to start from. And what we do is we pick any two data points to start from. We measure the distances of every other point to those data points. So we're st saying those first two data points are our starting centroids. We measure all the other data points, uh, distances to those points, uh, and then whichever one they're closest to, we classify those data points as belonging to that centroids class. And then we take the mean of both classes, and the mean of both classes becomes the new centroid. And we repeat this process over and over and over until the centroid stops moving. And from there, we can say the data is clustered. So. Uh, with that, to begin, one thing that we're going to go ahead and do is take some code from part 34. If you don't have this code, uh, if you haven't been following along for some odd reason, uh, you can go to the part 34 on the text-based version of this, these tutorials, or you can go to this version. We'll have at least this code uh, there along with all the other code we're going to write. So you can go there. So I'm going to copy basically this, all of this. So copy that. Come over here, paste. We aren't going to be using scikit-learns k-means. That would be kind of silly. Uh, we'll go ahead and just show this just once. And I'm going to get rid of this stuff. So we're just keeping basically the imports, the definition of x, the scatters just to show, and then the color stuff. We'll just, uh, I'll do that. So real quick, just to look at the data set if you aren't familiar with it or forgot. Uh, this is the data set. should be pretty simple. We're hoping that we can create an algorithm that automatically determines when k is equal to 2 anyways. Automatically determines, hey, there's a centroid here, a centroid here. This is cluster uh, one, 0, we'll say, and this is cluster 1. Something like that. Okay, that's the objective anyway. We'll see. So, uh, let me make some space. And we'll start off by uh, defining our class. And uh, this will be a, uh, let's see, uh, class k underscore means. And we'll start off with an initialization, so define init. And here we're just going to pass self k equals 2. Tolerance will be 0 0.001. And then max iter for max iterations, we'll say, is 300. So what's going on to start here is that we are uh, we're going to say the tolerance is 0 0.001. That's just, the tolerance is basically how much that centroid is going to move, and this will just be by percent change. Max iteration is basically just how many times do we want to run this before we're like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> so um, I've never seen a data set that, you, that failed within 300. Usually it's like 10 or less iterations or so. Uh, depending on the data set, but usually it's very quick to actually like find the centroid to a pretty high degree. But sometimes I suppose it could take a, could take a while with maybe really high dimensions or something. I don't. Know. Anyway, uh, so now we're going to define some of that starting value. So self dot k is just going to equal that that k value. Uh, then we're going to say self dot tolerance will equal tall. Self dot max iter is just max iter. Also, this is not just arbitrarily chosen. This is copying uh, scikit learn. Second learn here actually might have one more zero. I can't remember, but anyway, the other one's fine. Um, but hopefully you never actually hit 300, uh, but anyway. So now we're gonna have define uh, fit. This will have self and data. For now, I'll pass. And we'll also have a define predict. Um, and then this will also, we'll do self and data here as well. And, and we're just going to use the same sort of logic that we used before. So up to this point, you would never predict on data that you trained against. But with a clustering algorithm, or at least this specific one, well, the what happens at the end of the day when you've trained is you just have these centroids, right? So 
if you pass the exact same data that you trained against through, it really doesn't matter. It, what matters is it's the centroid. Um, so, so you're not really cheating by passing through data that already exists. I mean, you might be sort of, I don't know, but, in, but for our cases, you would be cheating if like you were trying to test it based on that, but that's not really what we're doing. Like the hope of clustering is a little different than classification with classification. We wanted to know how accurate we were, right? With clustering, we just simply want to, we're just hoping that those groups are made and, and exist, right? So, so it's, it's just a completely different, or not completely different, but it's a different objective. So at least in this case, we're not really cheating by passing in the exact same data through prediction. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So, um, because really we just we're just hoping that it, it makes the groups. So uh, to start with fit, we'll leave predict empty for now. And we'll populate that later. But for now, we're gonna go with fitment. So to start, we're gonna say self dot centroids, and that for now is just an empty dictionary. And then we're gonna say uh, for i in range of self dot k. So that's just for i in range of two, for example. So we might get a in our case two will be zero one. Uh, we're going to say self dot classifications. Um, or, or rather centroids, we're not ready to classify just yet. Self.centroids uh, i equals data i. Okay, so, so we're just iterating through data, which in this case we'll just pass x. So we're just saying the first two centroids are gonna be just this and this. Again, if you wanted it to be random, you could just random.shuffle the data set and then do this exact same operation. It, it should not matter, but that's why you do have tolerance and max iterations and maybe Maybe if you didn't optimize for whatever reason, by the time you hit either of these, you might shuffle the data and then try again. But nah, you, I've never had a data set that I that this didn't work on, so I don't know. But I'm sure it's possible. So you could you could I don't know have something coded like that if you wanted. Now what we're gonna do is for i in range of self dot max iterations. Here we begin the optimization process. And don't worry, it's much simpler than the uh, support vector machine was, as you probably already figured out, actually. But anyway, self.classifications, now we're ready, uh, is an empty dictionary for now. And this is just going to contain uh, the, the centroids and the classifications, um, or basically, but you'll see. Anyway, uh, for i, and then again, we'll do in range of self dot k we are going to say self dot classifications i equals an empty list so what's going to happen is self dot classifications will the keys will be the centroids the values will be the uh, feature sets that are contained within those values so then what we're going to do is and in fact maybe what i'll do is since we have that we could probably just graph that uh, pretty easily. So maybe what we'll do uh, when we go to actually graph all this and uh, show it is actually not do the prediction. We can use predict to truly predict new data. So we'll do it a little more formally correct. But again, it, it really doesn't matter. But yeah, we can do that because we'll just reference self.classifications as an attribute and then everybody will be happy. So anyway, so we've started, it's an empty list. Now we need to populate that list. So we're going to say for feature set in X. Greetings, I'm from the future. So as I was reviewing this video, I noticed that I'm calling this variable here X. Don't call that X. The only reason it's gonna work is because X is defined above this class. But if you were to import this or something like that, you would get an error. This actually needs to be data. So in this video, in the next video, I'm calling it X and I get away with it, but just know officially it really needs to be data because that's what we're, you know, and define in it or define fit rather, we have self data and we're passing x as data so keep that in mind first we need to calculate the distances and the way we're going to do this is a little little fancy but it, it's not too bad so for feature set next we're going to say the distances equals and then it's going to be a, a, a one line or for loop and we're going to say np.linalg.norm it's going to be the norm of that feature set minus uh, self.centroids and then centroid uh, so for centroid in self dot centroids. Okay, so all we're doing is this is just creating a list that is being populated with k number of values, right? Because for centroid and self dot centroids, that contains k number of centroids, so zero and one. So the zeroth index 
in this list will be the zero, basically the the distance to the zeroth centroid, right? And then the firstth element will be the distance from that data point to the centroid one, basically. Okay, so there we have that. We've got distances, and then basically from here, the classification classification is going to equal distances dot index. So what's the index value of the min? of distances. Boom, done. Finally, we can say that feature set now belongs to that that uh, centroid. So self.classification uh, or classifications, yeah. And then <laughs> classification uh, and then dot append feature set. So keep in mind, every iteration, what's happening? We are clearing out the centroids right? Because the centroids are going to change forever. Or I'm sorry, the starting centroids aren't going to change. My bad. But for every iteration, we're going to clear out uh, the classifications because each time you move the centroids, because uh, centroids, basically, you're, gonna, you're always going to have like a zero and one index or a key rather, but the value is going to change. So you're always going to have the same number of centroids. But here for the classifications, that's going to change every time the centroid changes. So we empty that out and redo the classification every single time. Now, self.classification, append feature set. Um, we're basically, we're done there. So we're done iterating through, uh, let's see, for i, let me make sure we're not going too far over. So this would actually be still, yeah, because you're still in the iteration, basically. And then what we're going to say is the prev centroids is going to equal the dict of self.centroids. And we basically have to do this because object inheritance, I suppose. But if you just said prev centroids equals self.centroids, uh, it would always equal self.centroids. So as we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to compare the two centroids so we can find how much they've changed. So we can use this tolerance value. But if you just said prev centroids equals self.centroids, um, it would change as self.centroid changed, um, which is obviously no good. So now what we would do is, um, I'm going to add this, but I'm actually going to show the first iteration without actually having this, but we're going to say uh, for classification in self dot classifications. Um, I'm going to say pass, but initially what we're going to do is uh, self dot centroids uh, classification equals NP average. And then this will be the average of self dot classifications classification and then axes zero. All this is doing is it's going to take that basically array value and it's going to take the average of all of the classifications that we have. So it's going to take the average data set uh, or the average, uh, it's going to find the centroid for all of the values that are of that previous centroids classification. So this is finding the mean of all the features for any given class. And then it's remaking that centroid. Like this def redefines the centroid now. Okay. And that's why for, sh for the beginning, I'm going to pass and just have this commented out. So you can actually see the first step, how it creates a centroid and picks all the closest points. And then you'll see what uncommenting that out, what change that ends up, uh, ends up making. And I think for now, um, I'll cut it here. And then the next video will continue and we'll, probably be able to finish this, but don't take my word for it. We'll have to see what happens in the next video, but probably in the next video, we can finish the, the entire thing and actually see if it works because predict is pretty quick. Uh, and the rest of what's left of this is not too bad. Anyway, um, so anyway, uh, you got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time.